Hello and welcome to MTTV's In the Kitchen with David Bradley. Uh, we're coming to you from the beautiful Martha Stacy building and uh, we want to thank Bank of the Mountains for allowing us to tape here. Uh, we're going to get started today with uh, a recipe that I really love and it's pimento cheese spread. And uh, what I've been doing is I have been grating up uh, some sharp cheddar cheese. And I've been warned by the producers of this show that uh, if I throw away any of these little dis big chunky discards that uh, uh, kind of fall off as I'm shredding, that I might be seriously injured. So, <laughs> so we'll be setting that aside for snacking later. But I have been uh, grading up uh, two eight ounce blocks of sharp cheddar cheese. Now you all know my rule on shredding cheese. You don't buy that pre-packed stuff in the store. Buy you a really good block of cheddar and hand grate it yourself. All right. So we've got some beautiful cheese there. And we're going to add this to our stand mixer just by the, the handfuls and we'll try to get it all in the mixer and not all over the place if I can. Pimento cheese is just so good. You can, and it's versatile. I mean, you can serve it with crackers, you can serve it on uh, bread. You can even grill it like grilled cheese. Just uh, spread it between two slices of bread. Put it on some, uh, put some butter in a skillet and fry it up. So it's pretty versatile. Just however you want to do it. All right. Now to that cheese and as you can see, I've kind of got it all over the place here. Kind of get that out of the way. To that, we're going to add about a half a cup of mayonnaise. Now we may have to add a little more, but uh, we can do that after we mix it up and we see if we get the desired consistency. And to that, I'm going to add a four ounce jars of pimentos. Make sure we get all those pimentos in there. Because after all, the pimentos is what makes pimento cheese. And then to that, we're going to add a pinch of salt and a pinch of black cracked pepper. We're going to put in a couple of dashes of Tabasco. And we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Got to have a little bit of heat in cheese. And then we're going to put in a couple of dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Right, and turn this on. Let it combine up. All right. I believe that it's going to be perfect. That half a cup of mayonnaise was just enough. And it all depends on the creaminess of your cheese, too. If your cheese is a little more uh, stiff uh, and a little less creamy, you may have to add uh, just a little bit uh, more. Uh, so we've got this ready. I'm going to pour it into our serving bowl here. Oh, that looks, just looks wonderful. So rich, creamy, just really good pimento cheese. And once we get it into our dish, I'm going to refrigerate it for about an hour. Uh, of course, it's ready to serve your ingredients if you've had it, your ingredients stored in the refrigerator. Uh, it's pretty much ready to eat. But I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour and uh, then we'll serve it uh, with some crackers. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a sandwich spread for some burgers that I'm going to make later in the show. 
Now we're going to make uh, something that's uh, a recipe that's real near and dear to me. This was my grandmother Thelma Bradley's recipe for homemade sandwich spread. And you know, uh, recently, of course, you know, the whole nation's under kind of like a foodie movement. So, you know, it's not just putting some mayo on a piece of bread and serving it up. Uh, you know, they're putting different things, making aiolis and, uh, and all different types of dressing. So it's not just mayo anymore. And this is kind of a play on that. My grandmother Thelma made this all the time. And you can actually buy uh, a product sandwich spread uh, in the stores. Uh, it's right where your mayonnaise and salad dressings are. But we're going to make ours homemade. And it is so good and so simple. So very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with about a cup of mayonnaise. Or I'm sorry, salad dressing. We're actually using salad dressing in this one. We're going to use about a cup. Okay. And to that, we're going to add some sweet pickle relish. And probably about a quarter of a cup. And... I'm just going to kind of combine that, if you will. So right now it kind of resembles like tartar sauce a little bit. But that's fixing to change because we're going to add about a tablespoon of ketchup to that. And basically the color that we're going for, we want it to turn slightly pink to slightly orange. And if you have to add a little bit more ketchup to get that, just that right color, then do so. And that right there, folks, is about the right color that we want. We want it just to turn just a ever so slightly pinkish orange uh, if you can see there and we have a spread that is ready to go on the sandwich and of course I can't wait I've got to I've got to try a little bit of it mm. Mm. tastes just like mamma I was used to make so and we affectionately called my grandmother mammy and she was one of the best cooks. If there had been a, if cooking shows had been prominent back in her day, she would have been the star. She was a wonderful cook. But anyway, that is ready to go. We're gonna put that in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. All of our ingredients were cold, so it's cold anyway. But we're gonna put it in the refrigerator to keep it cold. And then the next thing we're gonna make is my dad's recipe for Hamburger steak burgers. Now we're going to make uh, a recipe that's really near and dear to me. It's my father's recipe for hamburger steak sandwiches. And, and basically it's just hamburger with the volume turned up. But the way he done it, it was just always so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start slicing our pepper up here. Just a green pepper. And some people have their little tricks of how they slice pepper. I just kind of go down the sides and try not to get too many seeds and stuff in it. You definitely don't want to, any of the little white membranes here, kind of a little bit bitter. So I'll kind of scrape them off if I get any uh, in it. All right. So then we're just going to dice these up. And uh, anyway, as I said, this uh, recipe is my father's recipe. And uh, this is something that, uh, what I would call pure comfort food. Not only does it give me warm memories of him, but uh, this is just a really good burger recipe. So if you've had a bad day and you come in and make this, I promise you that everything will be a lot better. 
you kind of want to want these to be a little bit smaller dice. I don't even think this was a larger pepper. I think I'm just going to use about just three quarters of this pepper. I believe that's just enough. We're going for about a half a cup of pepper. So now I'm going to bring my bowl up here. And what I have here is some. Uh, ground chuck and uh, this is the 80 20 uh, ground chuck uh, you know there's different uh, fat contents that you can get in ground beef uh, the 80 20 to me is the perfect amount uh, of fat uh, for the burger the 73 27 to me is too much because your burgers will shrink and the 90-10 is way too lean for me. So anyway, we've got our burger in here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to crack an egg into it. And then we're going to take about a half a sleeve of saltine crackers. And we're just going to crumble that right up. Put it over it. I'm going to put a, about two nice pinches of salt, one big pinch of cracked black pepper, and about a tablespoon of, uh, of ground up uh, garlic powder. Now, we've got that ready. We're going to put in about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of Worcestershire. And that's going to make our burger really good. So before we get started in on that, we're going to turn on our frying pan to medium heat. And we're going to put in about a tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're going to kind of slide that around there and get that to going because we're going to saute our vegetables and as soon as we get them sauteed we'll add it to our burger mixture and uh, we'll be ready to patty out some burgers. Um, this recipe a lot of people say well it's almost like you're making a meatloaf and uh, and I guess it kind of is. Uh, a lot of people use bread instead of the crackers but I'm telling you as burgers these are absolutely fantastic. And when we finish these off later and add our homemade sandwich spread that we made, it is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be so good. So we're letting that, letting our butter melt and get in there. We're going to go ahead and add our onions. And we're going to add our peppers and we're going to let those uh, saute just until they the onions are translucent even turning just a tad bit caramelized and uh, then we'll be ready to patty out our burgers our onions and peppers are about to the right stage you just want to soften them up a little bit before you put them in your burger mixture. All right, I think that's good. And we don't want to leave any of that flavor in the skillet because we want it inside our burger. So we're going to just dump the whole thing in, just like so. All right. And now, come on kind of work this in with a spatula just a little bit because I'm going to get in here with my hands here in just a second and 
because you got to use your best tools you've got. And my hands are my best. So just get in there. We're going to work these burgers together. With my hands. Work in those onions and peppers and those crackers. That Worcestershire and the seasonings. about right all right we're going to get our burgers ready for our pan here pouring just a little more olive oil we're using the same pans we did the that we sauteed our vegetables in all right and now we're going to patty out our burger and i like to do about a kind of a palmful Hear that sizzle. You know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna fry up about to three. When my dad made these at home, you wouldn't go on anywhere. If you saw these on the on the in the frying pan on the stove top, you wouldn't go anywhere. You were gonna hang around. So we're gonna let those fry. Uh, and I like burger well done. Some people like theirs just like they like their steak medium, medium well, rare. Burger, I think, a little, is a little bit risque to do that. Uh, I like my, to fix mine well done. And with the onions and peppers in it, it's going to kind of caramelize up. So we're going to let these fry for about three and a half to four minutes on each side. And we're going to just continue to cook them until they're well done. Our burgers are just right. They're just done. So I'm going to set these. A lot of people want to put their burgers out on a plate, on paper towel, let them drain. Like all meat, you need to let it rest. So I'm putting this on our board. Just want to cover it with some aluminum foil. We're going to let that sit there for about five minutes all those juices is going to run back into that burger and when you bite into it mm, it's going to be perfect all right it's been five minutes mm, look how good that burger looks you can see how uh, the onions and the peppers have caramelized just everything just looks wonderful i think i'm going to go with this one looks the prettiest we're going to set it right there on top of our uh, lettuce and tomato. This is our homemade sandwich spread that we're putting on. Put on as much as you like. And a lot of people like to put cheeses and stuff on their burgers and that's fine. But I'm telling you right now, the burger is the star of this show. Isn't that look great? One way to find out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You guys have no idea how good this is. You can taste all the onions and peppers, the burger, that great sandwich spread. Mm so good and then our homemade pimento cheese spread big put a big glob on there mm. 
Mm. I'm telling you. Pure comfort food. So if you have a bad day or a bad week and you just really want to be comforted, try some of these recipes. I promise you they will be divine and you will love it. Thank you for joining us today. Again, our recipes are available by going to Mountain Telephone's Facebook page and uh, click the link there. Or you can go to Mountain Telephone's website at mrtc.com, click on MTTV, and then click the recipes link. And you'll have access to all of our recipes from all of our shows. Again, we're coming to you from the beautiful Martha Stacy Conference Center the kitchen here. We want to thank Bank of the Mountains for generously letting us film here. It's a beautiful kitchen, and I just want to bid you all a great day and happy cooking. <music>